So in PHP, we can take a look at creating generator functions. But what I want to do is I want to convert a regular function into a generator function, which can very easily be done. So we're going to start out with a regular function. This regular function is called satnav. And when we invoke this function, it's going to run every single command it possibly can. So all of this execution context will get executed and there is no control. We can't pause it. We can't stop it from executing every single command and tell it to yield at certain points. So I'm just going to save this. And when I hit refresh, you'll notice no yielding occurred. Everything went and executed perfectly, which is fine if that's what you want. But in this case, we don't. This is a sat nav, which only gives the set of instructions as and when it's needed. So I would like to break up this execution context rather than having one massive execution context or having several functions. I can now have one function that can do the job. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can convert this regular function into a generator function. Now, what I'd like to do is throw in a few stop signs, just like we have in our journey right here. We have a stop sign here and we also have a stop sign here. So I'm going to throw in some yield statements in PHP. What it does is when you invoke the function, if it sees any yield statements in the functions execution context, then it automatically knows this is a generator function. So we don't need to do anything really special here in PHP. It automatically identifies this function is a generator function because it contains yield statements. Now, what happens when I invoke a generator function, which I'm doing down here? Will anything happen? Because if you think about it, we are invoking this function, which means we start from here and then we go down and you'll notice before the first yield, we have the distance variable and we also have an echo statement. But let's see if anything actually happens when I invoke the function. So I'm going to save that and let's see if let's say echo works because we can physically see that printed out in the browser. So if I hit refresh, you'll notice there's nothing in the browser. When I invoke this function, nothing happens. Now something did happen. But what? So whenever you invoke a generator function, what happens is it returns an object. Now this object lets you control the execution of your generator's execution context. So it can say, right, start running. And then when it yields, okay, yield, but then also you can start it back up again. So you can think of this object as the pedals in your car. It allows you to stop and go. And likewise, this object allows you to stop and go on the execution context of the generator function. It says, yep, yeah, go ahead. Or you could stick it in reverse and say, nope, redo that block of code there again, and then go to the next bit of code, next bit of code and so forth. So this is what we are actually receiving. When you invoke that function, you are receiving an object that lets you control the generator's execution context. So now we know it's returning an object. We need to store this object in a variable. So I'll just call this control. So you can think of this object again as pedals in your car. I can target this variable that now contains the returned object. And then I can start to run some of those methods, which will allow me to control the execution. So if I save this and I hit refresh, you'll still notice nothing's happening. We haven't invoked any methods that are associated with the returned object. So let's target our pedals or our control object, which will allow us to control the generators execution context. And I want to run the current method. Now the current method is very useful because what it will do is it will look at the current position we're at. Now, you know that we've invoked this function and what it did was it returned an object. Nothing yet has been executed. So in the execution context, our current position is right here. Nothing's been executed. So when we invoke the current method, it's going to look at the current position, the start of the execution context, which is where we're currently at. 
and then it's going to create the distance variable. It's also going to echo out this string and it's also going to yield back this string value. So let's save it and see what we get. You'll notice that it created the distance variable. It printed out the string start from driveway and it also yielded the value, this string right here. Now we don't see this string in the browser because it's not been echoed out. We didn't actually tell PHP to export this out to the browser. Instead, it just returned the value. So whenever you run the current method, it will actually look at the current position and it will also look at the current yielded value. And you can think of this like a return statement in your function, but it's even more powerful and we'll explain why later on. But when you run the current method and you hit a yield, that value, that string data right there will be returned after the current method has been invoked. And so what you can do is you can write echo. So when I say echo, what it will do is we'll say, right, start running from the current position, keep going until we hit the first yield. Once we've hit the first yield, return the string and the string will be echoed out. So I can save this now and I can hit refresh and you'll notice we get a line break and the string first stop. And so now I can take a look at the current position again. Let's just copy that command and paste it down below. Now, don't forget, it's going to return the current position. Just like when you stop at a stop sign, you don't go back onto your driveway. Nope, you're still at the same position. And so this object makes sure that it keeps track and keeps control of the execution context. So now when I run the current method, we're still at the same yield sign and it's still going to return the same string. So if I save this now and we echo that return string out, you'll notice we get first stop again. And then if you run it again and again, you will notice we'll keep getting that string first stop. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to continue my journey. I'd like to push the accelerator and go past the yield sign. So what do we use for that? Well, we use the next method. So let's go ahead and take a look at targeting our pedals and then we want to run the next method. So let's save this now, go back to the browser and hit refresh. So we have start from the driveway, first stop, that's the first yield and then it says take a left. So that's the next echo statement. And again, you'll notice because we haven't told it to print this string out, we don't get this string visible in the browser. And maybe going, ah, well, we're using the next method. So what we need to do is we need to write echo right here and then save it. And then, oh, we don't get that string. The reason why is because the next method is just basically hit the accelerator. It means carry on from that point and it does, but the next method does not return anything. So it has executed this command and this command, but it doesn't return anything. So this string value that's being yielded is not being returned by the next method. So echo there is useless because next returns void. It returns nothing. So I need to use the current method again, and then I'm going to paste it down below. So we've carried on. We're now at the second stop sign after we invoke next. And then I'm saying, look at the current position, grab that value, return it by the current method and echo it out. So I'm going to save it. And now when we hit refresh, it says second stop sign. So now we know where we are in our function. We also know that the next method doesn't return anything. It returns void. And now we're stopped at the second yield or stop sign. And I want to push the accelerator pedal again and execute the last two echo commands. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find my pedals. So control, and then I'm going to press the accelerator, which is the next method. Save it, hit refresh and you'll see destination reached and your journey was zero miles. And we created the distance variable right up here, distance equal to zero, right at the beginning of the execution context. And we concatenated that variable down here at the end of the execution context. So we can see that that variable was created. Now also consider the benefits of this. Don't forget the current method returns a value. So you could store that value inside of a variable. So this string, for example, would be inside this variable val. And then I can go ahead and I can echo out val like so. So save that. And you'll notice you get exactly the same thing. 
But also what I could do is I could concatenate onto there. So I could say concat123, for example. Save it. And notice concat123. So what's really nice about this is I could pull out that yielded value and I can do some analysis and I can say, you know, echo. And let's add in a few line breaks in here. So I want to add, let's say, four line breaks. Save that, hit refresh. So what's happened is we've run the first part of our execution context with the current method. Then we've taken the value that's been returned from the current method, this value right here, this string data, and we stored it inside the val variable. And then we echoed the val variable out and we concatenated concat123, which is what we did there. And then we also had an echo with four line breaks. Now this, all of this is being executed outside of the function. So we have stopped, we've yielded, we've given way to these commands being executed outside of the function because the function has yielded, it's giving way to other processes. And right here you could be analyzing data and this is a really simple function. You could be fetching MySQL data, you could be analyzing it. So as a recap, old style functions, execute every single command they possibly can. Generator functions allow you to break the execution context up into iterable parts. When you invoke a generator function, it returns an object and that object lets you manipulate how your generator function is invoked. And then of course, what we have is the ability to pause and we can come out of the function, we can do some analysis and we can go right back into the function exactly where we last left off. So if we're at the first stop sign or the second stop sign, that's where we continue from at that specific point. This is really nice and it's a new way of doing things with functional programming. It's really good for certain tasks.